Hello and welcome to today's Jazz Text Effects tutorial. My name is Chris Parker and I'm going to show you how to create this jazz poster out of text. When you're done, you'll know how to create a custom brush out of text, how to use layer masks, how to bend text, and more. So, are you ready to master this GIMP text effect? Awesome, let's do it. Let's go ahead and open up our image for this project. And the first thing we need to do is crop it to a square canvas. So let's go up to image and select canvas size. Make sure the width and the height are not locked together. Otherwise, GIMP is going to adjust the height. So for the width, we're going to type in 3173, which is the size of the height. Click your tab key, and then we have to tell GIMP what part of the image should be inside of this square canvas. We want our musician, so click and drag to the left and click resize. Next, let's create a new layer. Let's call it gradient background and click OK. We're going to grab our gradient tool here. And then in the tool options, you want to make sure that you have radial selected. Now we need to select our colors. So for the foreground color, I set it to this yellow color, which is this hexadecimal number right here. So if you want to use the same color, go ahead and type that into the box. For the background color, you can actually select it from here. Just click on that swatch and I chose this color. So go ahead and type that number in or just choose any two colors of your choice. Now, before we add it, let's go to our tool options again and click right here because you want to make sure you have the correct option selected. So I want foreground to background. So make sure that's selected. And then we want to click in the center of the document, click and drag out, and it will automatically show you that gradient before being applied to the layer. You can then adjust the length of the gradient itself by grabbing this outer point here and making it shorter. And now we have more of that bright color situated in the center versus fading out further to the edge. You can also adjust the center point right here by clicking and dragging this circle in or out to adjust the type of gradient as well. I'm going to go ahead and hit my escape key so I can get out of that because I want to place this gradient directly in the center and it's kind of hard to see where that is. So we're going to add a couple of guides to help us out. So let's go up to image, scroll down to guides, new guide by percent. We have horizontal and 50 by default, which is what we want. Click OK and then you should have a guide. I don't and that's because I have it turned off. So let's go up to view and select show guides and there's our first guide. Now we can go back and add a vertical guide and that's dead center. So from here I can click right here and drag out my gradient. I like that so I'm going to hit enter or return to commit those colors to my layer here. Let's go back to view and hide those guides. Let's grab our image layer here and let's rename it. Double click on the layer name and call it original. So we don't want to apply our effects on the original layer. Otherwise, if we make a mistake and decide that we need to go back, well, we ruined the original layer if we applied all our effects on that specific layer. So we're going to work non-destructively by duplicating it. Let's move it up to the top and let's call it step one. So this step involves removing the millions of colors in the image down to two main colors, black and white. Let's go up to colors and select threshold and it's instantly converted to those two colors. The only problem is we have some detail that was lost in the process in the highlights in his face here and his hand. So we can bring that back by clicking on this little node right here. It's kind of hard to see. Just click right here and drag it to the left. You don't want to go too far. Otherwise you bring detail back in the background and we need to remove the background to transparency. And we'll do that next. So go ahead and click OK. 
To remove the main part of the background, which consists of white, we're going to select the white color with one of our selection tools. So let's go up to Tools, Selection Tools, and select By Color Select. Once you click on the white part of the canvas, it's automatically selected. Let's turn off our two layers here that are just below it by clicking on these little eye icons. Now to delete that background, we can click on our delete key or our backspace key and it deletes it, but it converts it to another color, which is based on the background color that we have selected. We want this to go to a transparent background. So how do we do that? Well, let's undo this first. Let's go to edit and select undo clear. We need to go to our step one layer right click and select add alpha channel. Now you can go ahead and delete it and we have our transparent background. Let's go ahead and deselect that by going to select and none. Now we can erase the black part of the background with an eraser tool. So grab your eraser tool and let's choose a hard edge brush, this one in particular, and increase and decrease the size as needed to go around and erase the background. Let's go ahead and duplicate this layer and name it step two. Before we work on it though, let's go back to step one here because I want to add a blending mode to it. So let's go to mode here and select dissolve. And I also want to lower the opacity as well. So I'm going to go ahead and move the opacity to 25. Now it doesn't look like we did anything to the layer and that's because our step two layer is turned on. So if we turn that off, you'll see what it looks like. Go ahead and turn on your background layer as well. And let's turn on our step two layer again. And let's also select the layer because we need to add a layer mask to it. Click on this icon right here. Make sure it's set to white and click add. Now the fun begins. We're going to create some content to be added to our silhouette of our musician. So grab your text tool with the letter T or grab it from the toolbar. And then for the font, I'm going to use this font right here. It's a pretty common font. If you don't have it installed on your system already, go ahead and find that by doing a Google search and install it or use any font that you want to use. For the size, I'm going to set it to 75. Then for the color, we need to make sure it's set to black. Click OK and then go ahead and type something out. So maybe something like smooth jazz for the soul. Real quick, I have two important announcements you need to know about. One, this text effect tutorial is one of over 20 design projects you can learn how to create. Check out my GIMP text effects playlist to watch them all. Two, when you're done with this text effect project, I want to see your design. Seriously, I'll even answer your questions and provide feedback if you want. I have a private Facebook group where you can post your projects. To join the group, locate the link in the description below. That's it. Next, we need to make a selection of the letters. So with our new text layer here at the top, we're going to right click on it and select alpha to selection, which selects all the letters and then we need to copy them to our clipboard. So go up to edit and select copy. We don't need that layer anymore. I don't want to delete it because I may want to change that later on. So I'm going to turn it off and move it all the way to the bottom. Let's go ahead and deselect as well. And I'm going to click on the layer mask of step two. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. Next, we're going to grab our paint brush with the letter P or grab it from your toolbar. So where did our content go? Well, as soon as you copied it to the clipboard, it was converted to a brush. So check this out. Go to your brush panel and right here, this first item is your content in the shape of a brush. So check that out. How cool is that? I love it. Now all you have to do is click once and boom, you have that text effect that I created for this design project. Now for all of these different other sizes, all I did was is I adjusted my brush size and I randomly placed it in different locations and stacked the content to fill up the words throughout the entire silhouette. 
So let's go larger. I'm going to click and drag this to the right. And the largest I can get by doing that is 15, 16. So I can come over here and click right here. So I'm just going to continue stacking these. But again, I want to do these at different sizes. Let's grab our zoom tool with the letter Z and zoom in. And then the letter P again for your brush to get that activated and then resize it. So for something like this, I'm going to come in here much smaller and fill it in. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out again. I'm holding down my control key as I use the zoom tool. Grab your paintbrush again and let's make it much larger. The only problem is we can't make it much larger than 15, 16 when you're grabbing and sliding to the right. But if you double click here and type in a number like let's say 2500, you now have a much larger brush. So you can do something like that there. Maybe you want to put one down here and then maybe you want to go even larger for right there. Maybe another one there. And then you can come back in here with a smaller brush to continue filling it in. So I think this took me about 20 to 30 minutes to complete this particular project. So instead of sitting here for the next 20 minutes watching me do this, we're going to go ahead and skip filling in the rest since you know how to do it already. And we're going to go ahead and complete the other parts of the design. So for this particular layer, I added a blending mode to it as well. So let's do that. Let's select our blending mode here and choose linear burn. I also want to drop the opacity down on that and that shows the grain or the dissolving of the layer below and it burns in a nice dark brown color, which is the color that I wanted for this particular design. You can choose a different blending mode if you find something that you like better, and it's going to affect the colors differently based on the effect or the mode that you select. So I'll let you play around with the different blending modes. Go ahead and choose one that you like based on your own creative vision. So the final step is to create our other content right here and convert it and angle it so it looks like it's coming out of the saxophone. So grab your text tool again and let's use a black color again and go ahead and type something out. I think that's a little bit too small, so I'm going to go ahead and make this larger. I'm just going to click here and drag up to make a selection of all the text. And I'm going to resize it to 275. And I also want to change the color to this dark brown color here. Click OK. Let's also style this text by dropping the opacity down to around 50 and changing the blending mode to dissolve. I'm also going to adjust this so that the text is a little bit different. I'm also going to create another line here. Let's go ahead and grab our move tool now and let's move it down here. Next, we're going to distort the text a little bit by grabbing our unified transform tool. Keyboard shortcut is shift plus T. Go ahead and click on it and we're going to alter a couple of these corners here so it looks like part of the text is closer to us than other parts. So let's grab the top right corner click and drag down to the left and then this one up and to the right. So it gives the impression that part of the text is closer than the others and it looks like it's kind of coming out of the saxophone. Go ahead and click your enter or return key to apply that text effect. All right, now it's your turn to complete this text design project and to post it in our private Facebook group. To join our group, you can locate the link in the description below. Also, Please support my channel by commenting on this video, liking it, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Don't forget to check out my GIMP text effects playlist that has over 20 more tutorials and projects on text effects. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.